Welcome back to another video. It's Andy from gymnutrition.co.uk and in today's video I want to talk about this old bad boy, creatine. Creatine is a natural product. It's made in the body. So everybody makes creatine. It's mainly made in the kidney, the liver and the pancreas. And you can also get it from your diet as well. It's found in red meats, very high concentration in red meat. It's also in poultry as well, so chicken, um, turkey, etc. and in fish. There's a few types of creatine on the market as well. Creatine monohydrate, so this one as I just showed you. Creatine monohydrate is the tried and tested one. It's been around since the mid 90s. And since then there's been other various forms of creatine come out on the marketplace. Things like creatine ethyl ester, creacolin, and there's a HCL creatine as well. These newer types of creatine have, have also had quite a few studies on. But studies have shown that Good old fashioned creatine monohydrate provides the greatest results. So all of these other flashy ones that are more expensive that we sell on our website to be honest with you, some people prefer them, but the studies show, like I say, that good old creatine monohydrate gives you the best bang for your bucks and it's a lot cheaper than the, um, the other ones that I've outlined as well. So what sort of effects are you likely to see when you take creatine monohydrate? Well, if you are weight training, the first thing you're going to notice is you're going to put on a, a little bit of body weight. You're not going to slam on a stone. It's not a steroid. It's not an artificial whatever enhancement supplement. It's a natural supplement. So typically you're going to put on sort of three to five pounds on average. Some people slightly more, some people slightly less. That's a sort of weight gain that you're going to put on. Also, with me personally, my strength goes up. So I notice that a lot on my, on like the compound exercises. So like like your bench press, your some you know your shoulder press, your squats, bent over rows, those type of exercises. Now I typically go up. Say I was doing a, a max working set of eight reps. Now that particular weight for eight reps will probably go ten or eleven reps within sort of two to three weeks. Which for a natural supplement that you can take all year round, I'm pretty happy with that. So how do you take creatine monohydrate? So there's a couple of ways you can take it. The, the tried and tested one that everyone used to do back in the sort of 90s and 2000s was that you have a loading phase. So a loading phase basically means you take five grams, roughly, four times a day. And then you do that for around about five to six days. After that initial loading phase of five to six days, you take five grams per day for the, for the duration of the course. Now, things have moved on a little bit since then, so most people will scrap the loading phase and they will go on to the straight five grams a day. Now, is there any difference between loading or not loading? Yes, in the short term. In the short term, you will saturate your muscles a lot quicker if you load on creatine. If you don't load on it, it takes the saturation process of creatine into the muscles a lot longer. So you're typically going to see the weight gain that I've outlined and the strength increases that I've mentioned a lot quicker, say within sort of seven to 10 days. And if you don't load on it, you will get this exactly the same effect, but it might take you three weeks, maybe four weeks. So in the long term, the effects are exactly the same whether you choose to load or you don't choose to load. Side effects of creatine. There's not a lot of side effects of creatine. I think the most common one is either like stomach bloating, a slight stomach discomfort. I don't load on it. I just take five grams a day, every day, seven days a week. You don't just take it on training days. You have to take it every single day. Now, if I take five grams a day, I don't get any stomach discomfort whatsoever. I have tried loading back in the day and I did get slight stomach upset by loading. Once I got over the initial loading phase, I was fine on the one serving a day. So now I'm a lot older and I'm taking creatine again, I'm thinking I'm not going to load on it because the chances are the stomach discomfort will probably be great and now I'm in my 50s and when I took it in my 30s or whatever it was. So I just choose to do it that way. Do you need to cycle it? Yes and no. Some people choose to cycle it. There's, there's no research that backs up to say cycling is the best way to go or just staying on it forever and a day is the best way to go. Uh, you can do you can do either or. So when's the best time to take creatine? It seems like most of the studies will agree that taking it before or after training is probably the best time of day to take creatine. I take it after my training 
simply because it's, it, it, it fits nicely with my post-workout meal. Now, another way of increasing absorption of creatine is to mix it with protein, hence I'll take it after my workout, and simple carbohydrates. So that can be the form of a protein shake with a banana in it, a protein shake with, you could even put simple sugar in it if you wanted to, or dextrose, glucose powder, whatever carb powder you use as a post-workout. Um, if I have it in a meal, I'll show you that right now, what I do with it. By using simple sugars, that basically causes your body to spike its insulin levels. Now, insulin is uh, it's like a carrier hormone, so it's going to shuttle things around the body. So if you've got the creatine and the insulin in your system, it's going to shuttle that around the body more effectively to deposit it in the muscle cells where it's needed. So by taking it with sugars, you're going to get a lot more bang for your bucks. Now, not everybody responds to creatine. It seems, again, studies show 20 to 30 percent of people that take creatine are non responders. So, what does that mean? Well, it's not worth you taking if you're a non responder. How do you know if you're a non responder? Well, you ain't going to know. You're going to take it if it doesn't have any effect on, it, on you whatsoever, then it, you're probably a non responder, so just ditch it. Um, it probably accounts. The non-responder bit is probably because your body is very efficient in, in making creatine and your muscles are already saturated with creatine. Therefore, taking extra creatine is just going to be literally flushed out by the kidneys down the toilet. Now, before anybody asks uh, on the doses, because I've said five grams is a day, five grams per day is like a typical dose. I always get, oh, if, five, if he's saying five grams, if people are saying five grams in general, then if I take 10 grams, then I'm going to see even greater gains. You're not really going to, that's not really going to happen. The reason being is once your muscles are saturated, any extra you keep putting into the system, your kidneys just excrete it. So you, you, you're literally peeing creatine down the drain. So yeah, you, you can experiment, see how you get on, but that's basically what's going to happen. So in recap, creatine is a great supplement to take. You can take it all year round. It's not very expensive. I always use like the unflavored one because I can't. You can get flavored ones if you like, but I can't see the point in having flavored ones because I'm just adding that to something else, like a protein shake and a carb carb shake, carb food, whatever. So it doesn't taste of anything. So once it's in there, you don't even know it's there. Um, this particular one that we sell on gymnutrition.co.uk, it's micronized. Now, again, the studies have shown that micronized creatine doesn't get absorbed any better than normal creatine monohydrate, so you don't get any greater results using micronized than non-micronized. It's just that the, the creatine molecules have been broken down a little bit more with the micronized one, so you would think in theory that it may absorb a little bit better, a little bit quicker, whatever, um, but the study's shown that it doesn't do that. I still prefer the micronized simply because it's very, very gritty, um, it doesn't dissolve in, in, in your protein shake, so you'll tend to have like a, a horrible gritty bit down the bottom, so you, you need to swirl it to get the last gritty bit out. The micronized, because it's really, really fine powder, you don't tend to notice that. So I just, I just use the micronized because it seems like a nicer, nicer way to, to use a creatine. But like I say, you probably won't get any more uh, results in terms of muscle growth and strength by using this. It's just personal preference. If you found this video useful, then please leave me a thumbs up. If you didn't, you can leave me a thumbs down. Please leave a comment. Um, ask me anything. I'm, because I'm not a big channel, I do tend to answer everybody's comments. So um, it's good to keep up with the, 
community if you like and please consider subscribing to my little channel and um, thanks for watching I'll see you on the next one